Hey musician, I'm Dr. Mike Tubetskov, the mad scientist of metal. And here is my metal studio tour. For all of you gearheads right there, let's do it. So, I've been reluctant to actually make this video for a long, long time since I moved into this new place, because I truly think that in the modern day and age, the sound that we're getting is predominantly ruled out by our skill, and not by the gear that we have, not by the space and stuff like that. I also never wanted to come across as a bragger and a show off about the gear that I've accumulated for all of these years. But then I realized that, hell, the sound and the approach that I'm getting is now integral to all these pieces of beautiful equipment that I've acquired over the years of really bloody hard work, man. All of this was incredibly hard to get, and I literally worked my ass off to pay for these uh, pieces of equipment. And they do serve their purpose now because I've been incredibly careful with what I put into my racks, what I put into my amp shelf, and why. And so today, I want to show you what I use every day in my studio and how that impacts the sounds that I get into recording, mixing, and everything in between. So let's start with the fun part, and that is guitar amplification. So I got two amps right there. One is Custom Audio Amplifiers OD100, and another one is Angle Blackmore. These two amps differ in character and complement each other. And let's start with the Custom Audio Amplifiers. CAA, or CAE, Custom Audio Electronics, is a brand by guitar manufacturer Sur. S-U-H-R, I can't bloody pronounce that ever. And these amps are not widely known, but they deliver incredible tones for modern metal. They have super rich meads, they have modern and fat sound, and unbelievable crisp present top end, which you can't find elsewhere. These amps have top tier components inside them, so transformers, and some describe them as Marshall on steroids, which I don't completely agree with, but they do have a bit of a martial sort of uh, dynamic character. As a downside, custom audio amplifiers may have a bit of a woofy low end, which needs to be tamed down, and they're not exactly uh, the super high gain amps, so you have to crank up that gain to get into the chuggy territory. That's why I always record with some sort of an overdrive pedal for this amp. The pedals do exactly what they need to do. They tighten up the bottom end and give a bit of uh, extra gain that is required. By the way, let me quickly show you the pedals. I got, obviously, the Horizon devices, super well-known pedal by Misha Mansu from Periphery. Really incredible overdrive, super flexible, has that modern tone, has the gate and the attack knob. Is really cool for sculpting your sound prior to the amp. This really helps in a wide variety of situations, and this has been my primary boost slash overdrive for a little bit. But then I recently got this uh, Dirty Tree uh, Peppers pedals, and this one delivers incredibly nasty, disgusting, chunky tones, which you want to have in some instances, uh, especially talking about some modern. Uh, deathcore, metalcore sort of uh, territory. But this can also go uh, well for even clean stuff. We recorded some cleans with this pedal with just a hint of overdrive and tightening prior to it, and it really changes the character in a cool way. So uh, these are just some extra tools to experiment with when recording and just to have fun. 
Let's talk about the angle now, though. So, interestingly enough, I'm not actually a huge fan of angles, and I tried a lot of them. I can't remember the actual models, but uh, I think I tried top-tier model with four channels, and it looked like a spaceship uh, flagman sort of amp with incredible amounts of controls, and I didn't like the sound of it. It was too compressed, too gainy, too overcomplicated with all those controls. It looked amazing with that blue light, but other than that, it wasn't my thing. I like to keep things kinda simple, and ideally, if there were just a few knobs to turn to get a great sound, that's what I would go for. And that's exactly what this angle does. Firstly, it is a little bit more open in terms of uh, compression and gain structure, so it is more dynamic, which I like. Secondly, it can deliver a wide variety of tones, both in the traditional metal and modern metal territory. It's not scooped, but it has that somewhat colder undertone in the top end, which is suitable for some productions. And it just sounds massive and is versatile. Super aggressive, super tight, and rather modern as well. <laughs> So it's super easy to discover great tones with this amp as well, and these two complement each other nicely for all of my recording as well as reamping duties. So I reamp pretty much always with those amps. When I record my guitars, I do not use a cab, rather than I use Sur Reactive Load Box. The reason for that is that this load box takes up amps load properly, and it responds in a certain way to the amp dynamics, which I like. You can crank up the amp as loud as you want, it will behave the same way, the load box will chew it up and deliver the sound into the interface uninterrupted. The beauty of that is, instead of micing up a cab, which I could, but I don't do, I go through a library of impulse responses, and I have a vast variety of own hammer impulses, which I love. And the beauty of that is that I am much more flexible with that setup. I can select different cabinets, and I can select different mic positions in real time while the guitar player is performing. We can go and change things up, so we can change a different microphone and even switch to a different cab. And that's the beauty and the flexibility of this setup, and I chose that approach mindfully. So this helps a lot. For my bass amplification, I'm using the Dark Glass Alpha Omega 900. Rather cool little head with unmistakable modern bass tone. Has really flexible overdrive, which I don't find in plugins. And the amp character itself is great. Has that big low bottom end and the distortion just adds on top of it. I like to blend this amp with some amp seams and some distortion and some bass DI as well so that I have all the flexibility that I need. If we want a super modern tone, we primarily go for this head. If we want a more traditional tone, we just blend that underneath. <laughs> Let's talk about my monitoring. Probably the most important thing in the studio, uh, apart from acoustic treatment, which I'm not going to be covering today, because I've talked about that as well already. So for my monitoring, I'm using Focal Solo 6 BE, as well as Amphion 115, uh, with an unbranded amp from New Zealand. Having two sets of speakers helps to mitigate any of the particular characteristics of uh, the individual speakers so that you can refer to how music sounds on different brands 
simultaneously, as well as the room response. So my amphions for the moment are a little bit wide, and they have that low-end gap, which is now filled in with the focals. Overall, my amphions are incredible, fantastic speakers with tight low-end, an incredible crisp top-end as well, and it's just been an incredible joy to mix on this. It's been easy, and my mixes have been translating really well from those speakers into any medium that we got. Focals, on the other hand, have big low-end response and kind of warmer mid-range character. They do have great tops as well, just different. So both complement each other really well, in my opinion. And in order to get the bass response right, I use these Audio-Technica headphones, R70X, which I find really invaluable in the studio. So that covers what I'm using in terms of monitoring, and without uh, good full-range monitors, I wouldn't be able to deliver good mixes, so this is super freaking important. Now we got to the fun part, the outboard gear. Let's talk a little bit about the story of how I acquired this gear and why. When I started mixing, and I think professionally that was 2014, so more than six years ago now, when I started doing that, I was inspired by modern records that sound real and natural. And at the time, I didn't quite know how to get that sound. So I started experimenting with different plugins, different uh, brands, different companies. And first, what I got was a Universal Audio DSP accelerator. It was just a DSP device which could run Universal Audio plugins. Once I started mixing with Universal Audio plugins, which some of you know are analog modeled plugins and they pride to have that analog character, I realized that this is the way to go for me and I'm incredibly inspired by how musical their behavior is. So I got really highly inspired by those Universal Audio emulations and I started to learn how things work and I started to learn my ways around uh, favorite pieces of equipment. As my career progressed, I kind of ran out of inspiration with those plugins, and I kind of decided that I want to try the real deal, the next level. And the first thing that I got was this little compressor, the Rupert Neve 5043 bus compressor. I was blown away, to say the least. I was able to learn how compression actually works on the real unit, and I was able to push it much harder with the results that you actually expect from a compressor rather than worrying about plugins introducing artifacts, which they still do a little bit. And the other thing that struck me so hard is the tone. Just the unit itself introduced subtle but effective tightening and sweetening of everything I ran through it. And... I realized that although it is so subtle and you need more pieces of equipment to accumulate and to get the enhanced tone together, that was just something that I couldn't uh, work without. Since then, I started to invest into certain pieces of gear with that exact thought in mind, that the analog character is accumulated through different pieces rather than one single piece. So I had invested into Capi, a VP26 and FC526, which are mic preamp and a compressor. These are sweet pieces of equipment, which I use primarily for recording vocals. Uh, I also use this uh, compressor for drums during the mixing stage sometimes. My main mix bus processor is louder than liftoff Silver Bullet. You may have seen it in some of my videos, and I talked a lot about it. For now, I will just say that it has API and Neve circuits for sweetening and subtle saturation of your mix bus, has a little bit of an EQ uh, and a tone, and it just sounds uh, unmistakably analog, similar to a large format consoles with huge sound, and it sounds more modern than those old school devices as well which is a great step forward in the industry, 
in my opinion. All of my mixes then go through Rupert Neve 5 for 2 tape emulators, and these are saturation devices that help to sweeten up the sound, make it bigger and louder as well, with the actual magnetic head inside of this, because I'm a huge fan of magnetic tape sound. This is also the modern way of achieving this. For my main sound card and conversion device, I have Universal Audio Apollo X8, top of the line Universal Audio interface, which obviously allows to run uh, Universal Audio plugins, which I'm still using a lot these days, and which has incredible conversion for all of the mixes that go through it, obviously all of them do, and great preamps too, which I use for recording and for running all of this gear through as well. On compression side of things, I have this Audioscape D-Comp compressor limiter, which is a diode bridge compressor, which sounds absolutely incredible on guitars and drums. And this is one of the devices that sound absolutely 100% unique and just unmatchable. There is no plugin and not even the hardware devices of mine that can match this sound. This probably was my most successful investment to date. You can push it so hard and it will still sound musical, massive, and just huge. This is my latest addition to the system, uh, and I've been very successful using it for guitars and drums in my mixes. Finally, I got uh, Wes Audio Hyperion. Really cool unit. It's an analog EQ with digital control. So you have a plugin controlling the analog device. It's a really fun EQ to use. Again, it sounds unique, and I do not have similar plugins in my arsenal. They just don't sound like this unit. This sounds like Hyperion and like nothing else. It has a cool name. Uh, Hyperion refers to, I think, a Greek god, but also to a Dan Simmons uh, super sick book, Hyperion, which I highly recommend as well. Uh, check it out. And then the fun part is the recallability. You can recall this unit by a USB cord, so you can do whatever you want with it. You can save presets, you can switch between things, and you do not have to worry about recalling it and matching the parameters, which I actually have to worry about. That's one of the downsides of using the gear. I have to take pictures of my settings and then store it in my door so that I can recall them, which is a bit annoying. This unit also allows for saturation and distortion by using this THD feature. Very helpful on guitars at times. Overall, smooth, clean, and really cool sounding EQ. And finally, I got louder than lift of Mr. Focus units. And these have an SSL I think it is SSL 5000 sort of circuit in them. So it's an SSL console uh, derived circuit built into these two little units for saturation and coloring as well. I use this on drums a lot and they sound phenomenal. Again, I'm just thinking while I'm filming this video, all of these pieces of equipment, they do not have any equivalent any equivalent in the box. There are no plugins that would match these units, and I've tested a lot. There are no plugins that would uh, match my tape emulations. And I use a lot of tape plugins as well because I'm just a fan of tape overall. But these sound unique. This EQ sounds unique. Uh, these two units, unmatchable. Louder than liftoff, nothing like that. Decomp, it's just, uh, nah. Next chapter is the mics that I use. And as some of you know, and as some of you have actually been here, we record vocals in the studio with great success through those two preamp and compressor units as well. And for vocal mics, I got three at hand. So obviously the first one is this uh, RE20, Electro Voice. You can judge how it sounds by listening to my voice, but this has been a huge discovery for me. I know that some of you are big fans of Shure SM7, and I didn't want to follow that because I tested SM7B for me, and it was a bit muffled to my taste. And this is a direct competitor of SM7B. It's a dynamic vocal mic, behaving 
similarly to SM7 with a more open top end. I think it sounds incredible, honestly. That's just my personal taste. Uh, leave it to take it, but it works for sure. The other two vocal mics that I'm using are Audio Technica AT4050, sick mic uh, with a modern sound, uh, somewhat radio like characteristics. Hard to say. It's really flexible, has different uh, polar patterns to be switched on it, and uh, it's just clean and crisp and has really open, big top end. So this is for the singers who need to sound open and bright. As an alternative, for those of you who sound really bright already and need to complement that with a darker mic, I got this Octava Russian mic in a uh, wooden box even. Here goes. MK319. Made in Russia. Uh, the build construction, by the way, is so-so. <laughs> Sorry. But the sound is incredible. And it's different. What this mic does, it has this really warm, crisp and crunchy character with a bit dark overtones. What I find is this mic is superior for screams and for any raspy or thinner sounding voice that needs to complement that with a darker mic. If I push this through some distortion box or uh, crank up that preamp gain, it just really delivers on screams. So this is something that we have been using with great success for that. Mic test one, two, three, Electro Voice RE20. One, two, three, mic test, Electro Voice RE20. Mic test one, two, three, Audio Technica 4050. One, two, three, mic test, Audio Technica 4050. Mic test one, two, three, Octava MK319. Mic test one, two, three. So this is it for a rather brief overview of my studio, the gear that I'm using and why and how. I hope that you find it useful and I think it's healthy to talk about everyone's setups and everyone's approaches to this as well because as much as we hope that gear doesn't matter and it it doesn't in a sense of making or breaking the record it helps and it helps me to get inspired it helps me to have fun throughout the day it helps to put some unique characters and staples on your tracks and that's all that matters during the day. Thanks for watching. Ask me questions. Hit me up for any gear advice as well. And if you're curious about how these things sound, I was thinking of uh, organizing a live stream where I could run your tracks through these units. Or you can just send me an email and ask me to run it through and I'll be more than happy to do so. Thanks for watching. Cheers.